I'm hoping that this title reels in all the woodworking critics because who better to judge if my skills are real than you. Today I want to address something that's been on my mind. You see, I wear a couple of different hats which could lead to assumptions that I lack the actual woodworking skills. I run a sawmill and I supply wood to woodworkers and while that's a significant part of what I do, it's not like I can't make nice things if I want to. At least I hope it's nice. There's always a chance I just get totally roasted in the comments. You might recall my previous rustic table build, essentially the 100 meter dash of woodworking that took us four days to complete. So much time we put into it? That's the only time we have That's left. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. While rustic can sometimes be seen as synonymous with less than perfect, I believe it's an art form. No, it actually is what woodworkers call their sloppy projects. So this time we're making a live edge table that isn't rustic. Do you want to slide across it? Oh, come on. <laughs> this thing you can't pick up on camera is just like the feel of it. I can still feel grain lines and yet it is buttery smooth. Okay, so the first thing you need to look at when you're doing a table is selection so this brings up the debate of flat sawn versus quarter sawn. In this case we're using flat sawn just to get uh, the width. To get around the fact that it is flat sawn we've kind of let it dry for you know months inside of our shop and before that it was outside for three or four years so. One thing you guys should know is that I did have a new cameraman here and uh, he was uh, doing a good job but they're like <laughs> you know it's just a little too close for uh, for comfort sometimes with the microphone. You can't have everything. You can't have good audio and uh, personal space, I guess. Mike and I have this shared objective of wanting to build nice things, either for egotistical reasons or just pure joy of self-improvement. Now, I don't know if it's from being a production-based business or being chronically short on time, but we almost always have some sort of debilitating restriction, whether it's somebody's budget or the time frame in which something has to be completed. But not this time. This time we can keep working this and working this until it's perfect. Absolutely perfect where I run out of money. No matter what project we do, no matter how, how fine it is, or how small it is, we have to use a sawmill at some point. I see so far is like that knot is right on the joint. Yeah. That might show. And this, I'm hoping this will come out in flattening, so I think we're okay here. So over the years, I've thought about buying a track saw multiple times, actually. But I keep coming back and circling around to the fact that the track saws typically have this like limitation on their depth. They can usually do like two inches, maybe, if they're really industrial and cost a fortune, almost three inches. Doesn't help that I already own one of the largest track saws, a sawmill. The only downside to using a sawmill as a track saw is that you have this like rough kind of bandsaw cut to clean up. So here we're just using a bit of a guitar building technique and using a hand plane to just take a little bit of material off that edge. The OSB on the bottom is to help keep everything square. But what actually ended up making a tighter joint overall than using a hand plane was a custom built sanding block which uses a relatively flat piece of wood and some sandpaper glued onto it. Yeah, we just kind of rubbed it on there a few times and boom, there's no more bandsaw marks. Well, I'm not sure how real woodworkers glue together big tables like this, but uh, what I like to do is use a ratchet strap. 
I only have so many big clamps and also you know the big clamps are going to damage your live edge which I'm trying to preserve. So this is my personal ratchet strap method for you if you want to try it. Works pretty well. You do have to pad the corners still because uh, the ratchet can definitely dent everything. Pulls pretty hard and then if you do this you'll notice you'll get lifting and twisting in certain spots as things try to you know work their way out of alignment so you have to use a a chuck of some kind and clamp everything vertically as well. When I'm building a table I usually uh, I'm a little bit anxious until I get the tabletop glued together and then at that point I can kind of relax and start slowing things down a bit which is what we're going to do right here. We're going to start working on the table base. This is a little bit more finicky, a little bit more joinery is involved here. We are also basing it off of a design we've never actually tried before so there's going to be a little bit of experimentation with that. We did a tiny bit of research, basically went on the internet and looked at one photo and we're like yeah that looks cool let's do something like that and then we doodled a sketch of it on a piece of paper and we're rolling off of that. All right, if I've done this right, there should be a whole bunch of woodworkers watching this video at this point. Your job is to tell me how many degrees out those skill saw cuts are and anything else you notice along the way. So if you find any defects at all in this, you just let me know in the comments. The rules are simple. You can find them at the end of the video. I have a particular way I want them laid out. So what we're doing right now is we're building an X brace. We're using four by fours as the materials for that. We're taking roughly half of each side, put them together, and we're gonna have a lot of the strength factor coming from this particular joint. Basically, we're trying to sneak up on a final fit here. It's gonna take a while, so let's just enjoy some chiseling for now. Let's just check the moisture content of this wood before we go further because that's a good way to ruin a project is to build it and then check the moisture content. I'll put it in the joint. It's low, but it's not super low. It's 12%. I'd have to get my table out to do the conversion on that. It's a roughly 10 to 12%. On the end grain, it's 9.8. Yeah, I don't think it's super dry in here. You know? Mm-hmm. Same problem we've had. Eh? It's touching the concrete. Yeah. And then the concrete is dumping water into it. This is the real reason that I haven't been putting out a tons of woodworking videos. Is moisture content is the real thing that I'm afraid of when I do a build. If you have wet wood when you start, then it doesn't matter how pretty it is. It's not going to stay that way. Let's keep the comments uh, clean down there because I just, I don't even know why that works, but it does in woodworking terms. Hopefully this is a low enough moisture content. Um, it's not perfect. I would like to see it below 10, but we're just going to kind of move along slowly here and maybe this will hold together.
Oh my, I like easy browsers. It definitely cleans it up really nice. Oh. Fur is really interesting to chisel. It's so stringy. All like these individual threads. Sometimes I like to come up with these really simplified engineer tests, which are basically like, uh, let's stand on it and see if it breaks. In this particular case, Mike was the one sweating a little bit as I was suggesting, why don't we apply uh, that looks pretty good. You know, a couple hundred pounds of body weight across here and see what happens. Yeah. Times stronger. I feel pretty nervous because <laughs> I'm like, oh man. The thought, yeah, of, redoing the thought of redoing it. Redoing those. <laughs> <laughs> David's like challenging yeah. me. Go on, go on. You break it. Come on. Break it. I dare you. This is quality control. We should phone him and ask him. Like, is anyone going to be out doing those like Dukes of Hazard hood slides across this table? We're just, you know, just designing, and we're just kind of wondering if anyone's going to be, you know, like, you know, is this to be a party table? Are people going to be partying around or on top of the table? <laughs> Now that the legs and base are all assembled and we have everything roughed in there, let's switch back and start working on the tabletop. And right now we're going to do the most exciting part of this whole process and flatten the top, flatten the back, and start working on the sanding. Because as we know, the more you sand, the better things are, right? That's basically woodworking. Okay, I've literally watched this like 10 times in a row and I have no idea what I said there. I think I said lift with your legs in a weird voice. I don't know, it's pretty humbling sometimes watching yourself on camera. The advice is solid though, definitely lift with your legs. This is really heavy, not light. Just to size it to our CNC machine. Yeah. Flattening bit. It's going to take care of this table. The C in CNC stands for computer, but in this case, we're actually just controlling it manually with a keyboard controller, just like a basic video game. Steer the thing around, we're kind of just moving the X, Y. Honestly, that's the fastest way to do flattening for us rather than, you know, running box program or something like that, because then you can kind of see how much material taking off and make micro adjustments as you need to. It's actually pretty fun. It wasn't until we flattened the slab that I discovered that some of the knots 
in these pieces of wood were rotten. They're incredibly soft, very punky, and rot's bad. That's not something you want. So instead of, you know, throwing the project away, there's things you can do. You could like pour epoxy in there, try and solidify it somehow. But I actually just decided to drill it out. So this was an idea that was kind of planted by uh, my cousin who came by just like randomly while I was doing this. And he's like, hey, well, why don't you just like drill it out and put coffee in there and then you've got coffee in your coffee table for the coffee shop. And I was like, oh yeah, that's an interesting idea. Let's do that. At the same time, I was dealing with these small cracks that I hadn't really noticed either. Like there's these little checks that kind of go all the way through. And at this point in the project, they don't look like much, but I know from experience that over time, all of these small cracks are going to open up and they're going to become large cracks. So I'm doing some preemptive butterflies. Uh, we're going to bow tie this thing and uh, make sure that these cracks do not become much larger or any larger. And uh, whenever I do this, I often end up just doing it by hand for some reason. Like there's so many different ways you could do this you could set up a template you could use like there's tons of jigs out there but i always end up just like doing it by hand and uh i enjoy it it's a cool process but i didn't want to have to make another bow tie so in this case i actually just took the bow tie which was extra thick and i ripped it with this sweet japanese pull saw and then i moved it over to the other side of the table where i had another bow tie to put in and I flipped it over and put it in there. Two for one. The only downside of that is that I may have just gouged the table with the saw as I was sawing it. And uh, now there's a little bit of a divot there, which I'm going to have to clean up somehow. Every time I get lazy and skip steps, I end up paying for it later on. So basically I drilled some holes in the table and then got totally distracted by these cracks and ended up chasing those down. But now we're back to the holes. My first idea was to use grounds to fill in the holes. But then after thinking about it, it just looked like black sawdust basically. You wouldn't be able to tell it was coffee. But then I remembered I had these old coffee beans that I brought on a camping trip. My camping grinder, it just hadn't been used in months. So I thought it was fair to just throw them into the table. And now it's at least slightly visible that there's coffee there if you look close. table base a once over before I actually apply stain to it. Whoa! What's with that cat? Now, now it feels like it's looking at me. Alright. There, that's better. Do you think whoever made these rags knew where they were cutting? Like, that's definitely decapitation right there. Decapitation. <laughs> Get it.
it is solid fur. Solid fur. Kitty comment, please. <laughs> They've been really harsh on Johnny, though. It's so mean to John, yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't get enough close up, I think. He was yeah. just like a background. That was just not a weightlifter. Like He's character. screaming like a girl. <laughs> stop, stop, stop! <laughs> Pretty funny. What if you did three bolts? One in the middle on one side, and then two on the outer edges on the other side? It's one less than four, but. <laughs> <laughs> So for last one was a four day build. What is this? It's like a 14 day build? Yeah. It's like add 10 days. table is basically done. We've put on some number between six and eight coats on the top and about five coats on the back. Now we're going to do the polishing phase. So I've just sanded it to 320 and now we're going to bring out the high grit numbers. Like what do you got? A yeah, thousand? We're going to go 600. So I've got 600 grit and then we're going to go 1500 and then we're going to go into our polish. So much to lose at this stage because <laughs> You put so much time into it, and then you're like, okay, how much do we want, you know, how much do we want to do? It's such a judgment call. Don't want to wreck anything. If we keep sanding, we'll just remove all of the finish. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think uh, very, very light. I think. There we go. take much off. You can see it is taking something off. I like old school directions. Rub well. Rub well. Polishing paste. Doesn't look pretty. No. It smells terrible. All the stuff that's cleaned off, so. All right, so I'll start on this side, and I will work and probably just everything. Circular motion. 
<laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> Oh, it like it penetrates deep into your nostrils. Yeah, it's like a it's like a sinus clean out. Oh, this stuff might expire. We don't know. Shiny. Mildly debatable whether we've done anything, but uh, we like to think we did. I think it looks. I think it looks shinier. Have oh, these pretty gloss like we have these lights on here and that's helping with the gloss factor quite a bit yeah but uh at the actual coffee shop you know there won't necessarily be that sort of lighting yeah. so we should check it there okay and if you guys are interested in supporting the coffee shop just use our coupon code mountain voice inc and get 10 percent off at everything on their site at checkout Yeah. Every time I pick it up, it's heavier than I remember it. Yeah. I think it actually is getting heavier with all the coats. Oh, it looks good out here. Okay. Oh. It's like a one-legged yeah. step up. <laughs> Maybe don't suck it down super hard until we figure out which corners need to be sucked down. Okay. And I'll see if uh, Riker has a level. <laughs> that, I think that back corner that you have will need to be snugged down more than the other side. The one, the one that I'm on right now? Potentially, yeah. Okay, so it's- No, hang on, hang on. What? No, no, now this side's, no, it's, side. this side's up. Interesting. If you enjoy this type of video, consider sharing this with a woodworker you know. And if you are a woodworker, consider uh, telling me all the things I did wrong individually in the comment section. That would really help us out. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. You don't want to slide across it? Come on. <laughs> yeah. I think Two, yeah, two big oh, no. scratch marks from like the buttons in your pants or whatever. Oh. The thing you can't pick up on camera is just like the feel of it. Yeah. Like after you polish it, oh, holy so man. It just feels unreal. Yeah. I can still feel grain lines and yet it is buttery smooth. <laughs>